Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Lim Reviews. So in this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the Vivo iQ. So this was just launched a couple of days ago and it costs like a, a 1800 RMB. So this is definitely a mid-range smartphone. The reason why I think the Vivo iQ Neo stands out from the mid-range smartphone crowd is because it offers a rather interesting processor, the Snapdragon 845. This is last year's flagship processor but definitely still pack a punch by today's standards. When paired with 8GB of RAM like I have here, we should expect this to be a seriously strong contender in the mid-range smartphone category. So this is last year's flagship processor but definitely still pack a punch by today's standards. It's worth pointing out that mid-range smartphones launched this year by Oppo, Xiaomi and Redmi all came with Snapdragon 600 and 700 series but the iQ Neo is coming in strong with a Snapdragon 845. In terms of raw processing power alone, the Snapdragon 845 is way stronger than the Snapdragon 675, 710, or even the 730. So, is this enough to make the Vivo iQ Neo the best mid-range smartphone? Let's find out. First up, let's check out the design on the Vivo iQ Neo. The iQ Neo comes in two color combinations, but I decided to go with the black version because it looks really slick. The entire device does feel a little thick, but still feels okay in the hand. If you look closely, you notice that the back panel comes with a really subtle carbon fiber design which looks great if you ask me. I'm not sure if the back panel is made of glass or plastic, but there is a screen protector pre-applied on the back panel to protect it from scratches. Here, we also see the triple camera setup which does stick out a fair bit. Moving on to the sides, we have a fully blacked out metal frame that is smooth and shiny. On the right, you'll find your volume rocker and lock button like usual, and on the left, you see this red button which Vivo calls the smart button. So the smart button can be used to activate games, an image recognizer, or Vivo smart assistant called Jovi, but that only works in Chinese. At the bottom, you'll find the Type-C port, a single firing speaker, and your beloved headphone jack. On to the front, we are greeted with a beautiful 6.38 inch AMOLED display that is bright, vibrant and comes with great viewing angles. These days, you'd expect nothing less than an AMOLED display on your smartphone because it just gives you this better viewing experience. You do get a tiny notch at the top that houses the 12 megapixel selfie camera. It is a really tiny notch but if you ask me, I'd prefer to have a sliding front camera for that completely full display. At the bottom, the Vivo iQ Neo does come with a fair bit of chin and if you put it side by side with the Xiaomi CC9, you'll really notice how thick it is, but that's just a small issue to me. Performance wise, let's kick things off with a benchmark test to give you an idea on how much stronger the Snapdragon 845 is compared to the Snapdragon 710 that I have here on my Xiaomi CC9. If you just look at pure numbers alone, the Snapdragon 845 knocks the 710 right out of the park. It is a massive difference in scores between both these devices that actually cost the same. The 120,000 score difference is similar to what you'd get if you compare the Snapdragon 855 to 845. The good news is, the Vivo iQ Neo actually lived up to its benchmark scores. In terms of real-world use, the Vivo iQ Neo was noticeably faster than the Xiaomi CC9 in terms of launching apps and gaming performance. So let me show you guys the speed difference by launching a rather graphic-heavy game. you notice that the game launches quicker on the Vivo iQ Neo. It's not much, but it is definitely noticeable and if you game a lot, the little time difference actually adds up to a lot of time saved. Having said so, the high performance does come with a downside and that is, the Vivo iQ Neo gets warm really quickly. In fact, it got so hot at one point that it was uncomfortable to hold and I could even feel the heat on my thigh when I placed the phone into my pocket. I realized that the Vivo iQ Neo gets warm the quickest especially if you're taking a lot of photos or if you game for 20 to 30 minutes. Even when carrying out the benchmark test, the Vivo iQ was already heating up pretty badly. So I'm not sure if this will be fixed in a future update but this is something you should note for now. Next, let's talk about the cameras on the Vivo iQ Neo. Most mid-range smartphones these days come with a 48 megapixel main sensor but this is where Vivo had to cut down on cost. The sensor you get here is a 12 megapixel main sensor, an 8 megapixel wide sensor and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. At the front, you get a 12 megapixel selfie that also supports portrait mode. So after some testing, I found out that the camera setup on the Vivo iQ Neo works really well and is good enough for sharing on social media. Of course, it is not the best, but I took a couple of samples for you guys to judge on yourself.
Last but not least, let's talk about the battery life on the Vivo IQ Neo. The IQ Neo comes with a rather large 4500mAh battery that supports quick charge. So based on my usage, I managed to squeeze in about 6 hours of screen on time before it required another charge. The Vivo IQ Neo supports 22.5W quick charge, so charging speeds are actually pretty quick. At the end of the review, I was left with mixed feelings for the Vivo IQ Neo. So don't get me wrong, the Vivo IQ Neo does come with a great processor that offers really good performance. The AMOLED display is also great. The cameras are kinda okay in my opinion, although it could be better. Oh! And I also really like the sound quality of the speaker which sounds amazing for a single firing speaker. Having said so, the heating issue on the Vivo IQ Neo is something I cannot ignore. Smartphones getting warm is pretty normal, but for it to get to the point where it is uncomfortable to hold is something that I cannot ignore. Hopefully, this is something that can be fixed in the future update by Vivo, but we'll have to see if that happens. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!